to calculate both of these sizes. Yeah. So we get numbers and we compare them. So um, this is probably like the most the most natural way. So like imagine you have two two groups of the people you would like to say which one of is larger. So you will count the people in one group. Yeah. So we have like group A. So we count the people here. Then we have group B. We count the people there. Yeah. And we say okay here we have I don't know twelve people. Here we have four. Since four is smaller than twelve, then size of B is smaller than size of A. Yeah? So this is one way, but as I already told you, uh, we are not going to go this way, because uh, we are basically going to get uh, like screwed when, when we get to, to infinite sets, because they are too too large. Yeah? So um, we are going to do in a different way. Like Imagine that you have your uh, same problem as before, you have two groups of people. I don't know. Let's say, let's say, A is a, a group of, of women, and B is a group of, of men. Yeah. And you would like to compare which which of these groups is larger. You can. You don't need to compute. It. You need. You don't need to calculate them. Imagine that you can't calculate these numbers. We can do the following thing. Okay. So you say, okay, let's make pairs. Yeah. We have, we will put A here and B here. And what we are going to do, we are going to do pairs between people. Huh? So we are going to do pairs man and woman. And so in such a way that every man is in at most one pair, every woman is in at most one pair. Yeah? And we are going to stop when we have no man or no woman. Yeah, so stop with no free woman or man. Yeah. So we are doing this pairing, and after some time we stop. And there are like three possible possible results. Okay, so no one is is alone, meaning that the sizes are the same. Yeah? For every man we have a woman, for every woman we have a man. Or there is a, a man uh, missing, um, missing um, mate. But wh what does it what does it mean that number of uh, men b? is larger than the number of women because for every woman we have a man but for some men there are there is no woman anymore okay or opposite there will be um, some some women uh, there will be some women standing alone but what does it mean that we have more women than uh, sorry like more women than than men yeah so we can we can either like calculate or we can uh, like make pairs between between elements of, of two sets and we get the same answer in the in the case of finite sets you will get exactly the same thing in the case of of infinite sets uh, you are able to do to do at least at least something as, as we will see in a second okay so let me define this a little more formally so we say that a is smaller or equal in the in the size yeah so I'm going to denote it like this yeah, smaller or equal yeah if if what if we can find some some mapping between between these two sets so if there exists some mapping which which assigns elements of A we assign B elements from B. Yeah? So for every element in A we assign one element in B, but we would like to uh, design only different things. So we say that we want uh, that this this mapping is injective. 
Yeah? Meaning that we do not assign uh, assign to two elements of A the same element of B. Yeah? Meaning if if fx is equal fy, it's only in the case that x is equal y. Yeah? There are no diff two different elements which would have defined the if, uh, assigned the same the same um, the same element of B. Okay, so if such a mapping exists, we know that A is at most as big as B. Yeah, and A is like equally large as B. Then, if there exists some mapping which is not only injective in one way, but also in the other way, meaning that it's a bijection. Yeah? Bijection, like, uh, bijection, you can imagine that it's like uh, injective and subjective at the same time, meaning every element of B is mapped, but you can also imagine that bijection means that you have um, some kind of, of pairing on, on the elements. Yeah? For every X, we will assign some element of X, and they are paired together. And um, like, what are the properties of, of pairing? Uh, properties of pairing is that that every x has its own element, and every x is assigned to something, and no uh, no two elements x and y are assigned to the assigned to the uh, same thing. Yeah. So if we have x and y, x is non equal y, then also f x is non equal f y. Yeah. And on the other hand, we also know that every element on the on the right hand side has something assigned to it. Yeah? So for every 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 z in B there exists some element x such that fx is equal to this z. Yeah, so uh, also there is like no no element on the on the on the right side on it. Okay? And um, so, uh, what we need to prove is theorem which uh, was proved by um, Cantor and uh, Bernstein. Basically, like uh, they were like exchanging letters uh, concerning proof of this theorem. And uh, so, so the theorem is called after after both of them, which is something uh, which is pretty much pretty much necessary if if this this ordering uh, would would make some sense. Uh, but if this uh, would not hold, then the ordering would be would be pretty pretty pointless. And it says what well, if a is smaller or equal b, and at the same time b is smaller or equal a. That's exactly if I don't know if A has the same size as B. So this is uh, yeah. Uh, you surely know this this property from uh, like ordering of, for example, natural numbers. If uh, x is uh, at most y and y is at most x, then what does it mean? It means that x has to be equal y. Uh, if they wouldn't be equal, one of, one of them would be would be smaller or something like that, and then uh, the the uh, one of the one of the conditions would would not hold. So something like this had to hold. But what does this mean? This this means uh, this uh, we have to take a look at the definition, and this is okay. So we have two sets A and B, and we have two mappings. Mapping F. And mapping G, F maps elements X to to F X maps from A to B, and G maps these elements to the other way. Yeah, and both of these mappings are injective. And so what we need to we need to derive that there exists some mapping H which is bijective. And is uh, H is let's say from A to B. Yeah, so something like that. So we have two injective mappings, and we would like to compose them 
to uh, get some bijection. And there are many proofs of, of this. I will show you one which I, which I consider very nice. And this uh, proof is uh, using uh, graph theory. Okay, so, and the uh, proof is, is basically like this. Like, we, uh, if we would like to do it uh, completely formally, we should derive something like uh, infinite graphs. But let's omit it. So we will we will consider infinite graphs. So what we are going to do is to take graph uh, and the vertices of the graph will be elements of A and elements of B. Yeah, we take a disjoint union of these two. So let's say that um, like white vertices will be will be representing A and black vertices will be representing B. Yeah, so we have white vertices there and we have we have black vertices yeah? now I'm going to now I'm going to draw um, I'm going to draw um, edges and edges will be will be of two colors yeah? so we will have blue edges yeah? which represents uh, function f yeah? so if we have some x here and f x here yeah, then I'm going to draw a blue, blue, blue oriented edge from x to fx. Yeah? So, um, so basically we take a look at, at the mapping and from every, yeah, from every, every white vertex there is exactly one blue arrow going out yeah so from x we are going to draw blue arrow to fx yeah okay uh, now this fx lies in in is a black vertex lies in b and similarly from every black vertex we are going to draw green arrow yeah which is going to some white vertex and this is going to G uh, to to G image of of, of this this vertex fx. Yeah? So similarly from every vertex, yeah, from every every uh, black vertex, yeah, there is there is green, there is one green arrow. Yeah, so. We, from Y, we go by the green arrow to G Y, yeah. And from from the G Y, there is uh, from from this element, there is some some other other uh, blue blue arrow going like this, yeah. So some black vertex, and then for example, let's say let's say that we go back, yeah. So so, so we have something something like this. So this is uh, F uh, G F. Yeah, something like this. So um, yeah, the labels are kind of ugly, but I, I think you, you get you get the point. Like we are going to construct this this graph. This is uh, something like we, we could call it like a bipartite bipartite graph. Um, yeah, uh, when when we take the union, we will like basically uh, like split the vertices to two groups. Uh, I think you can imagine like uh, some bubbles or something like that. But it's uh, just like formal nonsense, and we don't need to we don't need to care about it. But we have graph. Which uh, from every vertex there is exactly one arrow going out, and to every vertex there is at most one arrow going inside. Uh, so let me write it down. So what we know is for for every vertex vertex the out degree is exactly one. Yeah, and in degree is at most, and this is important, at most one. Uh, maybe you're, you're now kind of kind of surprised why at most? Because like in in this in this uh, picture picture before it was not true. We had like exactly one out degree, one one in degree, but. Um, but this is uh, just the property of this picture. Like, imagine that uh, 
like basically what what we are doing is like for example we are